We are live. All right. Still don't see the uh, photo coming up. There it we is. are. There we are. We are. All right. <clears throat> oh, it is hot in Texas. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Okay. It was like 97 today and like Oof. way over 50% humidity. So it, it was like feels like 109. Uh, oh, so, God. yeah, it was like when I walked the dog at lunch, I got home and I was Jeez. like, well, that shower I took this morning was pointless. <laughs> All in vain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. Yo, RPG's RPG dumb. is dumb. Welcome. Welcome, my friend. Hell yeah. Bottle cap. Hey, back on your video today, I was thinking about rules that encourage role play with... Uh, would death go a long way for some people? Like a character goal, inner desire, mixed with a vivacious ego, outward mask. Yeah. yeah. Were, were you the guy who was talking about uh, Chronicles of Darkness in the in the comments? Because someone mentioned yep. that. They got they have uh, mechanics like that in Vampire 2E and Chronicles of Darkness and uh, all the... That mm -hmm. entire line of games. Yeah, huge... Um role play forward role play focused mechanic yeah. a great and a great one yeah um definitely. i, I would say after having uh looked at that book again <clears throat> um yeah. the one thing that i really dislike about it uh is the kind of world building tool that they have at the end i think it's called like climbing the ladder or something like that uh and mm. basically it's like you do character creation with everybody there at the table and they have this like extra process of coming up with uh things that you've done in your life and like uh other npcs and whatnot and you basically create this big cork board of like you know the strings <clears throat> attached to different characters and whatnot right. and by the end you have this like big interconnected world for the gm to draw from um and right. the prompts for that are all like loser ideology uh like big time <laughs> it's like what about a time yeah. when you failed someone what about a time when you screwed someone over who was it like, and I, I was just like oh god yeah. <laughs> very very teenager yeah. angst which, it, which get it, it to be it fair is vampire, it's vampire but... yeah <laughs> <laughs> but still yeah i've seen more and more Oh, more and more. I, I've seen a few um, you know, uh, modern games, games within the last, I don't know, six or seven years, do the same same thing. Certainly, the five comes to mind. They drew heavily from that. Um, mm -hmm. I believe the latest iteration of Unknown Armies, if I remember correctly, they do that as well. And I, I get what they're going for. I'm not a huge proponent of um collaborative character building uh, i'm not viscerally opposed to it um i just prefer if we all know what we're doing right mm -hmm. come up with your character concept talk to me if i'm the gm let's have a conversation about it yeah you know in individually with the players and then I'll figure those things. Right. I, I agree out. with that a lot because um, it, I, I, it is the game master's role, in my opinion, to fill out and create that world um, and maybe draw from some like hooks from the players. But yeah. the idea of like the players coming up with the world, I, uh, I don't <clears> like Unless it. you're explicitly doing that, which <clears throat> you, you, can, you can do that if you want to, okay, make it clear <clears throat> this is a story where it is from the get a story a what uh you know uh what did you say i know right you said story I have to get off the stream. Yeah. story um <laughs> if, you're, if you're putting something together where everybody definitely does know each other mm -hmm. um like maybe you're all members of the same family or you're all you can do right. something like that um it's just not my preferred go to well well and um, even with that if you're like we're all part of the same family like say you're doing like a mafia game or right. even a medieval game where you're playing like all one house that's different yes. than like we are coming up with the factions in the world and like the locations right. and, and all this stuff um i still don't prefer to do it that way but uh but yeah i i, I think yeah don't you know 
don't tread on me. Much, that's, much that's, better that's the than the GM's purview. Like, <laughs> yeah, it, it's still much better <clears throat> than not taking into account role play. Yeah. At all, not caring about what your character's motivations are. Yeah. You know, I, I think it's. I think it's a a, a less um, effective way of mm-hmm. doing that. Um, maybe not less effective, but it, maybe maybe I think it really just is a, a personal style thing and a. Um, you know, how I typically run my games, I usually don't have it be the case where explicitly from the get-go you all have a very storied history together all yeah the players can do but um yeah bottle cap definitely not dumb at not all dumb. Yeah. as shauner uh, is saying quite accurate yeah i asked that because someone was talking in our in the comments on the video today about mm. chronicles of darkness and the and these sorts of I things and those are those are uh that's a system that very much like the mechanics do drive role play a lot, um, which yes. I like quite a bit. Yes, very um, much so. I don't know if I'd use all of it, and now that I've thought about it, just because there, there, like, there is actually a lot in Vampire. Um, yeah, definitely and, wouldn't use all of it. Yeah, um, but I would, I would pick and choose certain things. Yeah, it's at least you know an attempt was made, and in uh, yeah, and some of it's large very part, good too. It's really good. Yeah, really good. Yeah. Campaigns work best with a GM vision explained to the players so they can make good characters. Completely agree. Exactly. Yeah. Big Exactly. Agree Tell them there. this is the genre and the kind of feel that I'm kind of going for. Uh, this is the kind of game I want to run. And then they make right. characters that are compatible with that. And then yes. you have a great game. <laughs> exactly. Easy. Don't, don't tread on my backstory, on my bro. Backstory, yeah, bro. exactly. I opus. Uh, Bottle Cap says, no, I wasn't. Uh, pretty new to tabletop role-playing games. Uh, oh, do they? I might take a look at their system then. Yeah, check out um, Chronicles of Darkness, the God Machine Chronicle. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, the God Machine Chronicle is the main kind of like humans. It's a horror game, so uh, if that's not to your taste, maybe it's not the right game. But uh, it's, yeah, it's like a, a game of like dark mystery, and it's really, really cool. And then the other lines within that game or within that world uh, are all you play a certain type of monster, whether it's vampire or werewolf, uh, you know, some sort of like golem like, uh, mm-hmm. or um, a fae, a fae, fae creature. Yeah. Or like, um, what are the other ones? I don't even remember. A mage. Yeah. Mage. I still don't really understand what Geist is. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I still don't really get it. Um <laughs> But yeah, I never read that one. Um, got here, Shoner. Make your character with system with systems that have life events in them. Then see if any other characters maybe were involved in your life events or not. Yes. Yeah. Very definitely. much. We are big fans I've of life systems, paths. Cyberpunk. Yeah. Um, Traveler, from great. what we understand, yeah. Which we yeah. will get to Traveler. We we, we will. It is just, on the list. I, you know, I. Every time that I come on this stream, I said, oh, you know, I, I bought too many books. I'm not going to do it. But, you know, I just <laughs> bought this one. I've just given up on that. But right. I have more books than I can read right now. Um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even if we got them uh, today, uh, there's mm-hmm. there's so much in the pile, which is a good problem to have. Yeah. But... Embarrassment of riches. Yes. I think coming up with character motivations for a lot of these OSR religion dungeon masters would be <laughs> a monumental waste of time. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> my GM, Likely true yeah. in many cases. My GM did not use the factions in Vampire, created a smaller setting. That is a good idea. Yeah. Um, and that's one of the reasons that I actually prefer Vampire the Requiem to Vampire the Masquerade is everything is a lot smaller, a lot more local. Um, right. And you can um, you can feasibly do a game without the without the covenants and factions in it. Yeah, you come up with your own your own covenants or ditch covenants entirely. Just have yeah. to be based off of clans, or even just individual vampires. Yeah. in the city that holds sway. But that was like the for me the thing I really disliked about Masquerade over time was mm. just the overbearing nature of the meta plot. Um, right, and it is it's like globe spanning conspiracies, and it really it didn't have. Mm-hmm. Uh, it it didn't have quite the vision of what I wanted to play. 
uh, but then they made Requiem. Yeah. yeah. Although I do, Which I was do flawed, but... really like uh, a lot of what I've said it before. I, mm-hmm. uh, for as much of the of the hate that it has gotten, I think most of the hate against the fifth edition of Vampire the Masquerade is either uh, because of either the wokes or because of um, World of Darkness metaplot nerds. Which is the worst yeah, thing about the world uh, of darkness? Are the world of darkness is fans. the longtime fans of the world of darkness? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I could not care less what Beckett is doing, or who canonically holds um, you know, Tijuana or whatever. Yeah, who don't, cares? Don't care. And yeah. the other thing is, but a they, lot of the the if you're going to play Masquerade, um, and again, I haven't read. Obviously, I haven't read Five E yet, uh, <clears throat> and it seems as though it's been competently updated for the modern day but uh masquerade is definitely a game of its time and the yeah. gothic punk aesthetic is a very 90s aesthetic and it yeah. just doesn't resonate with me anymore at all it's like a dark like judeo-christian nightmare superhero game <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah it's very weird like i I really wonder what it would have been like to, what what product they would have come out with, if rather than, I think in many regards competently, like you said, competently, upgrading that world into the modern day, um, peeling back a lot of the metaplot stuff and honing in on a more personal horror feel which i like and i think is is correct um but if you if you really doubled down and made a sort of a throwback game and leaned into the punk um the gothic punk of of a vampire game in the vein of the early 90s yeah um, if that, you... it, i feel like that could still be cool yeah I, um, but I think it, it can... would have a different feel sure and i I, th- I i don't think that there's anything wrong with uh, playing to that as a genre, I, it's just not a genre I find very interesting anymore. That's, right. That's yeah. my it's a very, problem. It is da- very dated. It's dated, yeah. Especially in the way it was <clears throat> presented in the old books. Yeah. Looking back on them now, um, it's it's a slog. Yeah. Um, that's one of the things that uh, Requiem made some very, very good choices, in the even in the very beginning, in, in first edition, where they had basically, like, I think it came out in 2004, um, so it was probably written from 2003 to, or 2002 to 2003 and they made the choice where uh if you show up on if you're if you get caught on camera you're like blurred out and there's right. something wrong with the footage and eventually you just disappear and so mm-hmm. this allows <clears throat> the supernatural to exist in the world and not leave constant evidence of their you know right their escapades and yeah. Even at the time, it was like, yeah, there's more cameras. Like they were starting to have camera phones, uh, right? You know, but it's still now, early tech. yeah, it's just ubiquitous and everywhere. And the idea that you could have vampire played in the way that it was played in the '90s is completely ludicrous. Yeah. <laughs> and and yeah. and to avoid electronics in that, you had to have like sixth level obfuscate or something. Right. Like, right. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Genre. I just used two factions in that game, not all the vampires, and the di- and the two different vampires have to make sense being around each other. Some clans don't match with others. Correct. Yes, yes. that's a big problem, and that's a big problem with another big problem of Masquerade is there's too many fucking clans. Too many clans. A lot of the clans were clearly. Well, it is the case they were invented after the fact yeah. after some of the foundation had been laid uh but we want you know, we want to fit this in but we already have you know clan bruja right for example so you have the asamites you have these 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 ethnic clans asamites yeah. ravnos the the zemisi um giovanni 
the Giovanni. I hate the Giovanni. I know. I fucking hate the, the Giovanni as well. Yeah. Um, but I, uh, and this is one of the superior things about Requiem, uh, even though it was bland at first, the idea was correct and then got, you know, made much better in second edition was that they, or actually that's not true, over about halfway through the edition, they, they got better. But they brought the scope down to five clans and the five clans are essentially the archetypes of the different vampire legends from like across mm-hmm. the world. Um, yeah. And that simplified it a lot. And then they, because people wanted more clans, of course, they invented the bloodlines. Blood and lines, so you have yeah. that are like sub clans and they published so many books full of more and more bloodlines um, that I yeah. never read and never will read because yeah, I they will hate never that. Exist in any, yeah. They yeah. will never exist in any of my games. Yeah. <laughs> Shauner, the scope is what I'm after. I don't need to know the entire world, just the few blocks I live in. Yeah. I'm trying to I usually have a little bit bigger of a scope, but but yeah, a very limited yeah. scope. I don't need to know what's happening in Zimbabwe right. or in Paris. I don't, if, with, if I'm running like a, a vampire game, I want the scope of the city. You know, I don't yeah. care what's outside of it because outside of it is right. unknown terror and danger. You know, it may uh, as well not exist. Right, because you're not going to leave because you die if you do. Right, um, right, right. All the 2E Chronicles games give you toolboxes instead of meta plots, so that you can easily yeah. tailor a game to your own table's needs. Absolutely correct. And that was yes. the thing that I adored about that, even when first edition came out, was because there was no meta plot. You don't even know the history of the clans or anything because everybody who's an elder even if you've been you're thousands of years old and you've yeah. gone through torpor all these times it makes swiss cheese of your mind you, you know mm-hmm. like when you when you go to for the big sleep you just have nightmares and uh and dreams of the blood for you know millennia and you come out of it and you don't remember you know the things you remember you don't know if they're true or not um right and <clears throat> so there's it's everything is shrouded in mystery and yeah it's a great because introduction it, because it doesn't fucking matter it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Fucking yeah. matter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, being modular seems like the way to go. Yeah. The Dark of Maya. Hi, girls. Hope everyone <laughs> is well. We are doing fantastic. Absolutely. Oh, I hope everyone here is a method actor as well, because if you're not, you're not yes. allowed to participate in this. Yeah, not allowed. Yeah, yeah, not allowed unless you're a method actor specifically. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> They're currently role-playing as YouTubers. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> true. <laughs> Although we're not doing it very uh, authentically because we don't have the bisexual lighting. Uh, true. Yeah. True. Yeah. The Gentleman Gaber did YouTube videos for each clan. It took him a while to do all the books. I remember that. That was... Uh, I found his his channel when I looked up uh, Vampire the Masquerade 20th Anniversary Edition when that was coming out. And he was the only guy who was really making decent content on Vampire. Um, yep. Followed him for a long time. Mm-hmm. Not so much anymore. Um, yeah, he doesn't really update his yeah. uh, his YouTube channel. Well, I think he still does news for uh, for World of Darkness on not, their channel. Yeah. Not that I really care because I don't. His content's not very interesting to me anymore. Anyway. <laughs> right. 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 This chat has a high percentage of role players in it. Remember this moment. Yes. <laughs> yes. RPG is here. dumb. You're a theater kid. Okay. That'll that'll do. You'll that you're welcome <laughs> to stay. Nick hasn't hit me up on Discord yet. What alignment is that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've logged into Discord in months. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> I I, I um. log into Discord to use mid journey <laughs> and that and that's it right to like to like make the background that <laughs> sits behind us <laughs> yes gelatinous rube i'm always speaking in character but i know your pals don't like cowboy accents that's not true i i uh i live in texas and love texas and i <laughs> i am a-okay with cowboys that's right Percentage just dropped a bit. Sean <laughs> uh, coming in with the with the clutch zingers. Yeah. <laughs> Always a man of wit. Man mm-hmm. of wit in class. Of course. Sean is. Yeah. But which class and of what level? Ooh, which class <laughs> and what level? Yes. I'm excited to get the um 
the uh, that Hell Train book that my uh, my buddy John. Oh yeah, is that still going on? Kickstarter. It or, is still going on. Okay, because yeah, I didn't pack that yet. <laughs> I haven't checked it in a couple of days, um, but they are well. That's a DCC under. book, right? It's a DCC uh, adventure. Adventure. Um, module or uh, one shot. Although you can definitely. Uh, Weird Frontiers. It's anything like yeah. how he ran it uh, at Gen Con I think, four years ago. You could definitely pad that out for three, four sessions even. I think Weird Frontiers is what uh, Crispy's running. That's like his home game. Mm. Nice. Why can I not? Oh, because I have to log in. I'll take care of it later. Whatever. Yeah. It's doing very <clears throat> well. Yeah, just remind me and I, I will back that. I just keep forgetting. Got it. Gelatinous Rube thinks role playing in role playing games is stupid, and role playing in live chat is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I first read Vampire 2E and was kind of amazed how well reading it primed my imagination to make a character. Yeah. I think the way they did it went deep into vampire experience uh, would be like, yeah, I like the, the writing of, style is so evocative. Yeah, it's they really hit it out of the park with that. Yeah, they they really did. There's there's places in the book where it's a little cringe but uh it is for sure. the most part like it's a very active voice and really it like puts over the style of the game like you know what genre you're playing you can't not know yeah. what genre you're playing <laughs> yeah and I, I from what i haven't read every a chronicles book uh, or every chronicles line um but they've they've from what i recall they have been able to know um catch lightning in a bottle several times yeah how they've they've done it i really like it for as as cringe as i know that this game has and will be interpreted by many um, people mutants, uh -huh. <laughs> um changeling the lost is great uh, it's a great um yeah w worded very well written very well very evocative um and you know that game that game is is cool uh don't don't let uh don't let the enemy um right you know uh, define uh you know uh, colonize uh, words like trauma or yeah uh, stuff, stuff like that there's ways in which that can actually be very fucking cool if yeah you don't, well that's the thing is lame it, about it that game uh which i've i briefly looked over the pdf like maybe 10 or 12 years ago. So it's been a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it was probably the first edition at that time, but that was still considered a very good game when that came out. Yeah. Um, that's how they did like the, the, the trauma thing, like right in an evocative way. Yes. And then later games that they made when they really <laughs> stepped on the gas or, or they didn't step on the gas. It's more that they, they had the, like the leash taken off of them for yeah. how woke they could be. <laughs> That's when right. things like got really bad. <laughs> yeah. My one criticism with, um, changeling the lost second edition, um, from what I recall, this may be apocryphal, but I think I'm right. Um, initially there were going to be rules. So in Changeling the Lost, your your factions, your covenants in that game, you have um the different courts. They were the 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 default court system is uh spring, summer, autumn, winter. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Um they do a great job um explaining uh, in an evocative way what it means, what the ethos is being a part of those. There was going to be, I think, um, advice, um, not rules, but, you know, um, GM advice um, and help to uh, create your own court system. You don't need to just use uh, the, se the seasonal courts. And I think they cut that for page count, mm -hmm. which is unfortunate. Welcome, but Frog again, Artist. If you have an imagination, you can do that yourself. Frog says, uh, good stream. I watched it. And we very much appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you, Frog. Let's see what else happened. Mm -hmm. Gelatinous Rube says, RPG is dumb. My thoughts exactly. See, everyone's getting along here. We're building bridges. See? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's easy to make fun of because it gets cringy, but it's really evocative. You just need to read with the right attitude. Uh, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah, the danger of cringe in that game is much more pronounced than in 
other games, right. I would say. Like the you, Yeah. You have to tread lightly. You don't you don't have to tread lightly, but it's yeah. it's easy for like you can <laughs> You can imagine the sorts of people who would be like, oh, this sounds great. Yeah. You know, like coming in and just yeah. wanting the worst fucking thing that you've ever seen in your the life. Worst game. <laughs> yeah, the most the, the most minor of adolescent faux pas. Yeah. Or, uh, or growing pains is a, is a catastrophic psychological affair. Yeah. Um, yeah. One, one day a um, Chronicles game will be ran on this channel. Um, Someday. Who knows what yeah. it will be. Someday. RPG is dumb says, I love vampires so much. My default answer for uh, a decade to have you seen Underworld was a dirty look. <laughs> See, I can't tell if he's if he's role playing here because ah. if you were a fan of World of Darkness, giving someone a dirty look for liking Underworld would be the correct thing to say. <laughs> but <laughs> it could just mm -hmm. be that he hates vampires so much and found that movie so cringe. <laughs> <laughs> S tier role player. Let the right one in is the best movie, uh, best vampire movie in ever. That is a very good one. I actually prefer Let Me In, the American remake, because uh, I liked the the Reagan era '80s aesthetic uh, a lot more. Um, but mm. you're absolutely right. Uh, Let the right one in is phenomenal. Very good movie. Yeah. What was the movie uh, you showed me? Um, great. Uh, presentation of an oh, of love uh, humanity under vampire. the skin with That's Scar right. yeah with Scarlett Johansson came out uh, within the last ten years I think um, you guys might remember uh, like ten years ago there was this this meme about Scarlett Johansson because she like tripped on the street and like paparazzi like caught it all happening and it got memed into everything. Uh, it turns out she didn't actually just trip. They were guerrilla filmmaking a movie, and uh, mm -hmm. that scene is in the movie. But, um, yeah, Under the Skin is a really, really, really cool horror movie. Um, yeah, really And cool. I definitely recommend watching it. Uh, yes. It's not a vampire movie, but thematically and in so certain aspects, yeah. there's aspects of it that fit very well with uh, Vampire the Requiem. Um but it's a fu it's a fucking cool movie. Really Great good movie. music. Uh, yeah. Scarlett Johansson is beautiful in that movie, um, yes. and bears it all. Uh, mm. And but it's for art, so it's okay. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it's it's just really really good. Um, yeah. It's a slow burn. There's not a lot of dialogue. Everything is told visually. And mm -hmm. you, you just got to watch it. It's a great, great movie. Yeah, definitely. The right one is great. Like the book, too, but it's brutal. I did not know it was a book. Nor did I. More story, less bite me. A great vampire movie uh, was made by, I think it's Catherine is it Catherine Bigelow? I can't remember. It's it's whoever was married to James Cameron, and she made uh, The Hurt Locker, which won an Oscar uh, a couple uh. years back. Um, but she made a movie called, I think it's Near Dark, and it has Lance Henriksen and um, who's the guy who played Hudson and was in uh, Frailty, Bill Paxton, uh, uh. and the chick who is, um, I almost said Garcia, it's not her name whatever the fucking girl's name in, in aliens is, who's like the Marine. Like there's a bunch of these actors that they've all worked Michelle with. Michelle Rodriguez. Uh, it's not Michelle Rodriguez, uh, but it's the eighties. Michelle alien, they, Rodriguez. Yeah. yeah. You're yeah. not far off. The arch that is the exact archetype. archetype yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but near dark is great. It's about these like vampires driving around in this Winnebago huh. in the Southwest. <laughs> and like nice. some of them are really old. Like one of them is like a kid. Uh, that's just, trapped as being a kid forever and they're going yeah, around just yeah, like yeah. murdering people and the you know the protagonist like gets yeah movie. gets brought into this or like a great nomads movie there's some really fucked up and creepy shit in that movie and it gets goofy nice. at the end of course you know because you can't you can't you just can't take things seriously <laughs> um, but <laughs> it's uh that's a really really good one mm. have anybody here you know played the dune game is it good for a role-playing game, uh, Game of Thrones-style game? I have, I have the Dune game. 
um, but I have not had an opportunity to play it. Um, I've skimmed it. I haven't delved deep into it. I, I got the book primarily because A, I love Dune, and B, I also heard they were really good or really um, uh, interesting house mechanics, either to integrate yourself into one of the great houses, Atreides Harkonnen, or to make your own house. Um, mm -hmm. And from skimming it, again, I haven't played it, haven't run it. I did run a playtest of it um, before the game was released. Um, and it... Solid streamline mechanics, just like all of the 2D20 Modiphius games. If you've played any of the other 2D20 Modiphius games... Then you know um, the system. You know the system like and you less. know kind yeah. of how it's going to flow more or less um but i liked it yeah i liked um, it i can't remember who was playing someone we follow i think i saw them in a stream is playing the game of thrones by green ronin so if you explicitly oh, want to wow. play game of thrones then there is a game for that um, i wonder if that's still in print i don't know or not i don't know i imagine it's been a it long is. time since i've been uh, interested or following Game of Thrones or Game yeah. of Thrones adjacent things. It, it would it would um, shock me if it's if it's not in print. Um, but my suggestion, if you want to play a game like Game of Thrones that's inspired by the exact same source material, only it's literally like the source material. Mm -hmm. uh, check out Lion and Dragon. Uh, and the setting book that goes along with that, Dark Albion, uh, because right. it's it's literally it's the War of the Roses, like that whole fifty-five year period. Um, you have all of the historical NPCs, a bunch of extra NPCs in there, um, and very evocative world. Great random tables and like uh, game masters tools in it to keep your game interesting. Um, very deadly combat, and you can play characters that are. You know, from down from like hot pie all the way up to, you know, people who are part of parts of the great houses that are involved in this conflict. Right. Um, so I would definitely check that game out. I it's one of my favorite games of all time. I'm currently obsessed with it and running it right now. Um, and you can do a lot of different things in it. Uh, it it supports a lot Absolutely. of different styles of adventuring. RP, RPG is dumb brings up a something I've wanted to talk about for a while, um, and maybe will be a podcast episode. I have trouble thinking uh, thinking about Dune or Game of Thrones, how, how a Dune or Game of Thrones game would work. Too much intrigue for a tabletop party. The settings are too clever dialogue-driven, even for method actors and theater kids. So <laughs> this is, this can be a pitfall or um, a challenge or an obstacle in in intrigue-heavy games like Dune, like Game of Thrones, if you're focusing on that aspect of Game of Thrones, mm -hmm. and Empire, where the game is just a series of solo scenes. Um, I personally don't have a problem with if I'm playing, um, but I know uh, a lot of people do. Um, it can be hard if you're doing any intrigue-heavy, intrigue-focused, politics-focused game, where you're sort of you're wheeling and dealing, or you're manipulating your your pawns on the chessboard, uh, your influence, your authority as a certain noble. Uh, if we're talking about a great house situation, um, <clears throat> and that's all you're doing you're just politicking it can be very difficult to bring that into a party dynamic mm -hmm. um you know games have parties vampire has coteries but um that dynamic can break down pretty quickly um i'm i'm interested in doing something like with lion and dragon um and i'm not yeah. sure it's going to work with this the current group um we might experiment with it when someone finally dies. Uh, so I'm shocked nobody has yet. Uh, but 
very the, soon. Although the idea they have of, a protector now. Yeah, of like, uh, you know, creating a stable of characters that are suited for different um, adventures. And so you can do things like you can have some sessions that might be more focused on the politicking and the right. nobility and, and all of that. And then other adventures where you're playing characters uh, you don't you not even necessarily have to be in the same kind of like organization or whatever, but uh, that are right. doing something else. Um, so that's yeah. that's also a way to to get through that. Um, but I don't really think that there's a I don't know. I don't see it as a danger of the of it being like that because there's also just the potential for violence so much, especially in like vampire. Um, there's just so, <laughs> there's so much that can go wrong and like. Right. Uh, so I don't know. There's always something that can happen and like and yeah. things that can can complicate things and and get you into very sticky violent yeah. situations. I think think I think the issue comes into play. I'm I'm thinking mainly of vampire here because I've seen I've seen it happen uh as a player. I've I've had it happen in my games. And again, I'm not entirely convinced at least for me that it's problem certainly not certainly not at top if it is a problem it's not at the top of my list in terms of um you know an issue but um when you're all sort of holding holding court uh with all of your contacts your your influence you're doing things from your domain and someone else is trying to you know, play play the board from their place of power and no one act that no one has a reason to come together i think the issue the issue there that issue can be avoided by if, if you're the gm catering things tailoring things such that you're putting a particular effort into Threats and movements in the city that do affect all the players and sort of force them from their their bolt holes or their places of comfort and power, such that you have to engage with with the world. So I, I think a, li- a little bit of just extra extra m- mental effort uh, can go a long way to prevent something like that happening. Yeah, I also I'm thinking of like uh a good example for how you can even have like mixed groups of players of like different social class and whatnot that might be getting involved in different aspects of the game is watch like uh Rome on HBO. Mm, yeah. Cuz that's a show where like some of the characters are complete commoners basically uh and then sort of start to rise up through the ranks, but there's definitely like they work for like Mark Antony at at points and mm-hmm. and all and Caesar and these these famous characters and there is there is the politicking but that is a that's a show that I think does very well with like it has the political aspect it also has this violent action kind of aspect to it but it's all coherent within that world and I think you can definitely run a game um, in that style and uh, yeah this also. It brings to my mind the nothing going on right now. The, the matter of a, of a troop style play, which is something I have not experimented with at all. Um, st- uh, again, Mo Diffie's uh, Star Trek Adventures, uh, I think, presented a troop style play really well in a way which most people can understand, because most people understand. A Star Trek game, a Star Trek episode. You have an A plot, a B plot. Sometimes you have a C plot, and they're with different, different characters. And you have sort of your your tier one characters, or you have your bridge crew characters, and um, swapping back and forth depending upon what is appropriate or what um, C and the GM calls for. Uh, may also be a way to keep things interesting. I, I'm not sure if I would like that style of play or if I would re- if it would really um, rub me the wrong way. I'm I'm very intrigued by it. Obviously, Ars Magica is I think the 
the game first comes to mind for a lot of people when they hear troop style play um i've i played like a, a one shot uh, it wasn't a one shot it was a it was supposed to be a, a game of ars magica that ended after one session and that game is really um impenetrable to me um i still have uh, i'll just try the burning edition. wheel then yeah <laughs> yeah i want to know even more i want to know where are the religious zealots who only play burning wheel rules is written they are out there <laughs> really <laughs> they are out there yeah definitely out there <laughs> all right let's catch up on the chat here yes disagree that intrigue games are hard my group does them a lot um though i consider all the chronicles games uh pretty intrigue heavy yeah i agree with that uh i don't think it's necessarily hard it just has to be something that your players like to play um yeah it's not going to work if uh if people aren't interested in yeah in if they're just that. not interested um, in... i prefer i prefer an inter intrigue heavy game i do as well um i also like you know i also do like combat heavy games though um but i i really like i the thing is i like merging them i like there to be both uh yeah but it's uh it's definitely yeah it's like if your players are not interested don't force that on them <laughs> that's like it's just right. gonna be not terrible. for not for their sake for yeah, your sake for your sake exactly sake. for because it, it will not be uh it'll be an uphill battle yeah. and one you'll ultimately lose i assume it gets easier after you begin as things uh begin to snowball especially with if players have the brains for it yes yeah if you don't have the brains, just eat more since you're already a zombie. <laughs> <laughs> True. The consequences and fallout of your choices are what makes these games entertaining. True. I think yes. the OSR folks are more interested in challenge, while role players are more interested in consequences. Um. Yeah, they're they're both challenges. Um, I I think it's a, it's sort of a misapprehension. Yeah. Uh, I I think you're right. Um, in large. Part. I think OSR, there is, I, I think, an, uh, an over-focus on mechanical challenge and mechanical lethality um, as the be-all, end-all. And, you know, I can be socially devastated um, or even physically devastated in an intrigue-heavy game. Um, they're both challenges or they're both consequences or potential consequences mm -hmm. of role play um for whatever reason there's there's this sort of mental disconnect which i don't think needs to be there yeah necessarily I think rpg is something. dumb says i definitely enjoy and thrive oh wait did i skip something no i didn't i definitely enjoy and thrive off of the consequences of player actions yes uh, it's a mm -hmm. super fun facet of running games, watching players step on takes they aren't aware of, uh, aware are there. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I, uh, I love, it's not only like consequences for the players, but it's choices that they make that, uh, ha like make me have to come up with new stuff and, and go in and like a, yeah. uh, a different way or like it's. Yeah, it's just, it's fascinating. It's so fun. I love yes. being a GM. I like intrigue-heavy games. Uh, this is, again, the text is so small. Uh, I suppose I to rewrite, to my, rewrite problem, my problem. There, you can read it. You can read it. I suppose to re rewrite my problem with these settings is they're typically very stationary. Not a lot of adventuring. Yeah, I... Uh, yeah. I would say yes. A lot of those games are not built for adventuring as such. Uh, Lion and Dragon, I think, is because it is base. It's it is basically a D and D game set in the Rose War, so you can do the whole Rose War thing um, and the political intrigue if you want to. But the idea is you are still adventurers and you are adventuring, and there's plenty of opportunities for adventuring. Um, lots, right. lots, and lots <clears throat> of opportunities for that. Yeah, more hanging around a keep plotting. Yeah, this that this is also um, it's, it speaks well to the focus and to the um, accuracy as as best you can you can get um, in a game that Lion and Dragon puts over 
because of the lack of technology and the lack of magic, even if you, even if you're the king, um, or or the top Machiavellian person, um, who is just plotting and you know, whispering in the king's ear and sending uh, missives and correspondence and you know trying to to do that entry game, um, all those things run up very quickly to physical reality in absence of cell phones in absence of yeah. in, uh, instantaneous communication um a la magic um it adds even a lot of... even a even a noble and a, a, a quote-unquote politician uh you know has to go has to go to war has to receive court has to go face to face and uh, meet with their nobles from time to time and there's so much that can go wrong physicality right there's so much that can go wrong with communication across distances because it's like you have to first of all trust the people that you're sending the message with and then you have to hope that they get there and nothing goes wrong can they be you know turned and blackmailed or whatever in the in the halfway there could they just simply be killed intercepted yeah you don't know and so there's a lot of the the way that you can i think generate more kind of action in those those kinds of games is if uh you have these machiavellian plans that you want to have happen there's just so much that can go wrong with them uh yeah. that blow up blows up in your face that can cause uh yeah. more you don't have need the ability for you to, to act do on something yeah yeah from the keep Right. can't do it you can't do it you can't do it like you can do it from a skyscraper you know right with yeah. a phone call mm-hmm. exactly you don't have all the data at hand this isn't uh you're not uh a board member yeah in the penthouse suite a raven lands in your window <laughs> you learn the lord of the veil has been killed your plan worked. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds yeah. like a shit game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't rely. Yeah, I, I generally don't rely on on ravens. <laughs> OSR games really lean toward risk slash reward and resource management. The simulation slash world building seems to be there more for practical purposes of running a world than for role playing. I think that's a fair assessment. Yeah. Yeah. I th- and I also think. It seems to me that the OSR mentality or the OSR values um, lean far more in um, like player, uh, like pl- uh, what would you say, player, player payoff, or player risk, or a lot, a lot of these sort of risk reward things. It's it's more. I'm worried for my character. Right. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's rather the, than I'm worried as my character. Yes. It's the the you incentives know. of the game are for the player to act upon and to incentivize the player to behave in certain ways as opposed right. to the character gamey. in the world. It is more gaming. Yeah. Um yeah. And I get that. I mean games, but you know, not 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 my, not my style. Not my, my bag. Style. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, like we said in our video that came out today, uh, <laughs> you can role play within those systems. Mm-hmm. You can. These are not diametrically opposed ideas. <laughs> right. They're not. They're not mutually exclusive. Yeah. Even a, even a game like Basic D and D, whose you know switches and levers and risk reward uh, mechanics uh, are primarily like player focused all it takes is for you to just enter into the character and it works just as well but the only thing holding you back in that regard is you yeah uh this is why characters die so much good for a challenge but bad for role playing so that was about the last comment um yeah uh, it's hard for me to tell what OSR games lean towards because it just looks to me like games being ran poorly. <laughs> <laughs> what they don't yeah. understand is our style achieves the same thing. Yeah, and better. Yep. Yeah. And better. 
achieves that and more. Yes. Um, yeah. Ba Basic Expert had a good video uh, a day or two ago on sort of his, what is the OSR yeah. as he sees it? I enjoyed um, that one a lot. And I think he's, he's, I can't think of anything I really disagree with him um, on. I think he's, he's correct. There's a number of different like values or um, uh, interests, which are sort of all orbiting around this, this term yeah. OSR. Some of it is an aesthetic thing. Some of it is sort of a, a dissident activism thing. Some of it is just, you know, a, a we have to go back uh, you know, mentality. Yeah. Um, he was on you know, with I, I, um, Pundit and hmm. Diversity and Dragons, I think I yesterday. I still have not watched, but I need to. It was pretty good. And the way that uh, Pundit kind of described the OSR, I think, was basically like three kind of waves. The first one is the... Uh, this is It was very much in line with what Basic Expert was saying, was that it's like first wave basically was, you know, these essentially reproductions of the advanced Dungeons and Dragons rules that were just lost to time because WotC didn't want to sell that anymore. Uh, second wave was when you get things like Lamentations of the Flame Princess, where, you know, you're getting some sort of new idea with it, uh, still mainly relying on those rules. And then the third wave is essentially like using this as a kind of school of design, uh, uh, school mm -hmm. of thought in game design. Um, Right. Building off of the principles of those old things and coming up with new games. Um, yeah, and, and some of that stuff, I, I certainly have no problems with it. I, you know, um, even if it's not my style, I have no issue with, uh, you want to play white box D&D, but at the time it wasn't available uh, without searching for it and paying exorbitant prices on eBay. You know, by all means, uh, recreate it. I have no no issue um, with that. Some of the aesthetic choices yeah. are have been really cool. Then maybe more That's fail cool. forward mechanics uh, would help meld the two. Uh, that's a question for K999. Um, some of it is a cope for weak imaginations. It yeah. very much is. That is some of it. That really is some of it is. is. Yeah. Uh, Maybe they need Clearly to try. <laughs> maybe they need to try DMT. Cue up Joe Rogan quote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See the purple, uh, the machine elves. Yeah. The entity. But what CR are the machine elves? <laughs> <laughs> Let's all take DMT and run dungeon crawls. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> if you take DMT, you're not going to be doing anything <laughs> for about <laughs> 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. To go back to the question on um, fail forward mechanics. Um, you know, like I, my, my mind goes to Powered by the Apocalypse games. Um, I don't have... I don't know. It, it, I think it, it, that could work. Um, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of fail forward mechanics. I'm not viscerally opposed to them, but what I have seen fail forward mechanics, um, I have found they tend to crop up in games, which very much, um, assume and instruct you to plot out a story, either plot out a story or more likely let you, let's have you and the players from the get-go create a collaborative world and a, crea a collaborative story, an explicit story that we are going to tell. We're going to tell this thing, it's going to have an arc, it's going to have a beginning, middle, and an end. And that's not, that's not what I want to do at all. Yeah. Um, you know, a fail forward mechanic can add some extra flair uh, occasionally, um, just like random tables um, can as a supplementary um, tool mm -hmm. used to interject some some something interesting. But I think most of the time, having an explicit fail forward mechanic um, 
it just becomes a crutch for bad role playing. If you if if your if you and your players are have an immersive focus, a role playing focus, you're not going to need that. And it's not just that you're 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 not going to need that. Um, I think having those explicit like narrative mechanics tends to draw people who need those things yeah um and use them as an excuse yeah for role playing not an excuse for role playing as a, as a substitute for role yeah playing. but you know your mileage may vary k999 i just can't enjoy a dungeon crawl if i don't care about my character my friends characters or the world yeah agreed yeah it's, yeah who cares <laughs> I just it's spawned like... <laughs> in. I just spawned in. I have no money in my wallet. I yeah. guess I have to go into this this uh, this thing. It's like I like I like I love Diablo. I haven't played Diablo four yet. All my buddies are trying to get me to play it at the moment. Um, but I'm gonna wait uh, until someone tells me whether the story is good or not. I've heard the stories like about... who is kind of like yeah whatever. But they went back to the super grim dark uh, aesthetic, yeah. and it's apparently fun as fuck. So. Okay. They're, they're like, I can't believe that this is the same company that makes Overwatch. Like, they must be completely siloed. <laughs> like, they, the teams have yeah. to be, like, totally siloed because it's like they made yeah. a great game and they've just been pumping out shit for so long. So it's like, what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the, the point being, if I want to play Diablo, I'll go play Diablo. But that's not a role-playing mm -hmm. game, you know? Yeah. Or, like, you can, you can do that. Like, Diablo is a great example. Diablo is basically a dungeon crawl with an exceptionally compelling um, story and character motivation. I haven't played mm -hmm. the first Diablo. I need I need to get it. Um, you haven't played the first one? I never played the first one. I've only wow. played Diablo 2 and 3. Okay. I yeah. love Diablo 1. Diablo but 2 were, is a better I mean, game, but yeah, oh, I love it. Yeah. But So going, like, going off of Diablo 2, um, yeah, like your backstory is sort of like it it's it's whatever, but you're hunting down Wander, the former knight or warrior of Diablo the fighter, One. Yeah. Um yeah, and and you're getting caught up in all of these these different things. Um and there's a reason why you are going to dungeon delve. Um, multiple reasons why so you know you you can do a diablo style game that has a heavy emphasis on dungeon crawls if you just put the little bit of effort in and have a compelling setting with um compelling uh, characters and your players come up with very compelling um individual player characters with their own motivations and diablo is great because the world is so grim it's so fucked that um yeah to, to change anything uh you know or uh, even just to change your station or even just to get out of a place that's going to be completely overrun um there, there's many different reasons why you would put yourself in those very deadly circumstances. Yeah, and it's yeah. I mean, no, I agree. And it's you can you can completely do a great job of, of world building and having an evocative setting and having characters that make sense with that setting, having antagonists that mm -hmm. are interesting and you have compelling motivations. You, you can do all of that and still do yeah. dungeon crawls, <laughs> like you can. Yes. Uh, Uh, what if you start at the bottom of a dungeon and have to survive with the party? Like, make your way up? Yeah. Yep. That's how a lot of yeah, my campaigns I mean... start, lol. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I do, I, in a sense, I do that sometimes. Starting, you know, in the middle of the action. It, like, something right. has already gone wrong, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, need nothing, nothing in, wrong with that. And, uh, need to buy in first, enough. Bottle Cap. Sorry, didn't mean to, to talk over you. No, 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 you're fine. I was going to run a, uh, a fire dungeon crawl just for spite right before my injuries. <laughs> <laughs> I actually support all actions taken out of spite I am in support of. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 
So time to do that <laughs> soon, lol. Uh, the only thing I know about Diablo 4 is the promo event that BoomerCons thought was a real satanic event. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know that, but there, very, uh, when uh, when New York was funny. dealing with the uh, the Canadian smoke. Uh, it was oh. like in Times Square. Oh, I Square. saw that picture. Yeah. Welcome to hell. <laughs> it's like, welcome to hell, billboard. Diablo. <laughs> billboard. <laughs> I love how much you guys get it. This is like my Fox News where I come to hear what I want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> the OSR oh, yeah. thinks that dungeon crawls are good. But do yeah. Americans feel that way? <laughs> <You know? laughs> Try to do my best, Tucker. <laughs> Although he's not yeah. on Fox anymore, apparently. Not on Fox anymore. Yeah, he got shit canned, and now he's uh, on Twitter. On Twitter. Uh, what's really strange to me is that you guys in the Angry GM are the only people on the internet that seem to really like role playing. I know there are a lot more, but many online. Uh, oh, this is small. I'm sorry. I know there are a lot more, but many online opinions, online opinions expressed. expressed. Um. It, it boggles. Our minds too. Who's the angry there's... GM? I don't even know who that person is. <laughs> I don't even know who that is. Um, it does. It does boggle my mind as well. And uh, Shauner is someone who really loves role play. RPG yeah. is dumb. Who's in the chat right now? Go subscribe to his channel. He really likes role play as well. That was a good Tucker impression. Good. Inflection mm -hmm. at the end killed it. <laughs> role play master race. <laughs> Positive connotation of killed. <laughs> uh, yes. Is there a negative one? Um, <laughs> yeah. No. But. Uh, I don't know. This is it's kind of why we started too, because we were like, "There's nobody saying what what we want to say." Uh, there's a gap yeah. in the market, um, mm -hmm. and I think RPG is dumb started about the same time, maybe a little bit before we did, mm -hmm. uh, and is getting back to making content soon, which is good. Uh, I can't wait to see that. Yeah, um, very excited to see that. Yeah, his uh, his Your his GM riffs his riffs sessions are actually watchable. Uh, for yeah, for concept. yeah for yeah. <laughs> online you know tabletop rpg games most live plays are utterly unwatchable um, but you can definitely get down and watch those yeah the only way like a, a live play is watchable is if you have role play it's, right you no know, even then though it's rather it, yeah. it's if you're if you're role playing generally it's again it's not a performance so you're right. going to be watching people doing something for themselves, <laughs> generally. <laughs> right. So, for yeah. the most part, they're not very inter entertaining or interesting to watch, even if they're good. Alignment video is dropping tomorrow. Nice. I look forward to it. Ooh, nice. Only reason very we play is to, to challenge. See how uh, how our thoughts compare contrast. Yeah, how our thoughts align. <laughs> <gasps> oh my god, he said it. Yep. Uh, only reason we play is to challenge myself role play is to challenge ourselves challenge role ourselves play. Yeah. with role play yeah i agree i left uh i was on max's stream the other day and like edited my thought halfway through and i posted <laughs> something that was like complete nonsense like the sentence made no sense. He was like trying to decipher it. He's like, maybe my English isn't that good. I was like, no, oh, God. <laughs> I was like, no, it was me. I'm just stupid. Like, <laughs> I'll have to watch the stream and find. Yeah, I don't remember what stream, stream it was. Stream of consciousness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his channel is also really, really great. I would love to see some. Uh, I'd love to see him do some live plays. I would be very curious to see how uh, how he runs the game. Yeah. I'd be very curious as to why my dog is so stressed right now. There's not even any lightning. She's just like, give me attention. You've been at work all day. She's just sitting here panting. <laughs> <laughs> in a panic. <laughs> yeah. Well, you did say it's exceptionally hot. Although It I is. And so it's AC like. The AC is blasting. Yeah, the AC is blasting. It's not too, It's not bad in the apartment. It's a little warm with this giant fucking stream light on me right now. Yeah. But uh, it's. Yeah, she doesn't get as much exercise because we can't go outside as much because it's literally just like you fucking melt outside. You're wearing a goddamn fur coat. <laughs> and, <laughs> and like she comes back and like sleeps for an hour or two because it's just so exhausting. So yeah. I don't know. I feel bad for her. But, you know, I have to do a stream. So. I have to give the people what they want so that they I can want. get the clicks and the likes <laughs> that sustain me. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. 
yeah i'm uh i'm looking f- looking forward to <clears throat> getting back to our cyberpunk game it looks like it might be a a, a few more weeks because it can't be can't be this weekend right i'm going away i've also next weekend my parents yeah my parents are in town this weekend uh yeah. like there's just tons of shit happening um yeah so which uh, is frustrating unfortunate. scheduling yeah so it's, it's unfortunate but um you know game is not is not over it'll happen nope as soon as it is possible yeah uh, as soon as it feasibly again. can Although, again, just like the 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 problem of too of too many too many books, it's uh, you know, so many other ideas for other games. Oh, yeah. I also want to run. I also want to play in. Um, exceptionally frustrating, uh, right now having all these things percolating. All these ideas, no I know. Yeah. Again, a good problem to have, but I I don't want to have the problem at all. I want, yeah. <laughs> I, I want. I want unlimited time to just do whatever I want. Yeah. To do the things I'm time. interested in. But I guess I have to have a job and pay job. bills. Very lame. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Alas, yeah. We'll. Me. We'll see. See, okay, RPG is dumb. Says me. You can be my Fox News anytime. Black Lodge Games. Bullshit. You can be mine. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no. Absolutely. Yeah, I think um, a lot of people commented on. Um, I am. I am. Uh, so K nine ninety nine asks. Uh, I do live in Texas, not anywhere near Dallas Fort, Dallas, Fort Worth. Mm. Yes. It's not I'm, a secret. I'm in Austin. Yeah. <laughs> it's, that is that is on the internet already. So. <laughs> yes. Come here. Come here. I am on the East Coast. Hi, come at here. present, come anyway. Closer. Come closer. Come here. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Sit down. Oh, cool. There Bottle you cap go. is also in Austin. Oh, nice. Austin resident as well. Yeah, we're gonna. Um, Someday, Nick is going to move out here as well, and we're going to start a... Hopefully uh, sooner. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully sooner rather than later, but we're going to start an in-person uh, immersive role-play meetup and see who shows up. So uh, I anticipate seeing you there at some point, but that's uh, mm-hmm. someday in the future. <laughs> we don't, you know, when it, when it happens. Hi. Yeah. Hi. What is your deal? Chill the fuck out, yeah. please. But what what uh you know we're talking about our games we're talking about things we've we've done our takes what what games are you guys running right now are you guys running in a, in, in a, uh, running a game are you playing in any any games right now what do you guys have have on the on the docket right now what's your gaming schedule like do you have anything uh, that you're engaged in at the moment would be interesting interested to, to hear about it yeah. Um, I'm still I'm still going through slowly that Blackbird's RPG book. Really cool, really great art. Um, That's a like, huge book. thick one, right? Yeah, yeah. Huge book. Um, D100 primarily. They have some interesting, interesting uh, ways to utilize that core core mechanic. Um, definitely some. Some of the rules are, are are certainly burdensome, I would say, uh, and I would probably ignore or streamline. But um, really interesting world. Um, I love I love a good premise for a world. RPG is dumb. We should honestly get some story gamers together and run a dungeon crawl. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> we should do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I that would get so much. That would, that'll get so much fucking engagement because these yeah, they'll all come in idea. and they'll be like, "These guys suck. <laughs> They're doing it wrong." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, like man. free clicks. <laughs> free clicks. RPG's dumb already has a fire setting for it, which he already alluded to. Yeah, so. I mean, it sounds like you're gonna have to GM that one. I'm sold. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
my spike game has just been sitting on the shelf for two <laughs> growing months. in yeah. power. <laughs> <laughs> Sweetheart, you're fine. Chill the fuck out. My GM has developed his own system. It's very good, but it was made for our group's personal use. He would like to publish it someday, but I doubt he will ever get around to it. Um, he should do that. Yeah, he should. He should do that. Um, we're working know, on stuff. Uh, yeah. Um, that that's some something else. Like a, a a world and a and or a mechanical system does not have to be perfect. Whatever that even means. Um, personality goes a huge, yeah, huge way. Um, uh, a game that uh, Matt and I have talked about several times uh, within the Ring of Fire. It is in many respects a deeply flawed game, a contradictory game at, yeah. at times, uh, a completely non nonsensical and underdeveloped game at times. But An overdeveloped so game at some times. An overdeveloped yeah. <laughs> game at, at times. But it's it has yeah. so much personality. and it's So much personality. So much fun. It is so yeah. much fun. And it puts role play yeah. first. Like the first yeah. chapter is called role playing. <laughs> for God's sake. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a chapter. Yeah, it's exactly. not it's not a three paragraph blur. Not, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a fantastic game. I still love it, despite its flaws. Uh yes, yes. Yeah. And that's also an example too. Halo, exactly what you're saying is like personality can carry things a long way. Is that Ander had such yeah. a big personality that uh it was able to it you know that game did actually sell, you know, like it, it has people, people still play it uh, today. Right. Like there's a, there's an active discord the where huge, people are rabid fan base. Of yeah. People on a discord server it's, somewhere. It's crazy. Uh, and it's uh, so you can, <clears throat> I mean, there's no reason not to, there's no yeah, reason. There's not no to. reason. Not there's to. basically only upside. As long as yeah. you're fine and with people you... hating your stuff too, then it's fine. Like we're gonna yeah. publish stuff, and I know that some people are gonna hate it. Uh, yeah, and I can't. I don't wait. care. <laughs> yeah, do not care. I know it's good. Yeah. Um. Frog Arcist is speed running Halo as we speak. Are you uh, yes. making a new video about that? MRH Legacy says playing a Pathfinder 2E game been pretty fun. We can only play it for the summer, though, so we've been leveling up at least once every session. <laughs> it's kind of a glorified <laughs> one-shot. That's awesome. That's awesome, yeah. The Ring of Shiner, Fire? Yes, the, yeah, the, that's what we were talking about. Within the Ring about. of Fire, would WWAD uh, from, from back in the day. Um, I think I... I don't remember if it was me. I think I may have appeared in one... Uh, briefly in one of Shauner's old reaction videos. <laughs> <laughs> and roll for sanity. <laughs> roll for sa roll for sanity. I think I was taking too long to describe my character. Probably. Uh, <laughs> we probably. did go a little too far sometimes. A little too far. But it yeah. was an amazing time and an yeah. amazing moment in the internet because everyone at that time in our corner of YouTube uh was all about immersive role play. And so you had everyone yeah. who was super eager to just make that the focus. And mm -hmm. like I said previously, uh, the game that's on this channel, um, <clears throat> Helen Back, the first session, I was going through that because I was like trying to update the metadata on all the old videos. And I was adding timestamps to like, here's like relevant scenes and everything like that. And I realized after a while, I was like, they've been talking in character for 50 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, we might have got a little overboard, <laughs> but they had a great time. It was a great session, and that fucking video got like two thousand views. It has like over a thousand yeah. hours of watch time on it. Um, but since yeah. it's from ten years ago, you know, it doesn't count towards monetization. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Andrew did and does uh, often take forever to finish his turn. Yeah. Um, Shauner, my player is the worst. He asks me seven minutes of questions after every easily absorbed description. <laughs> Please roast the fuck out of him on your channel. <laughs> may or may not be a true story. <laughs> Shauner, the RPG hitman. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Sean is doing the work that none of us none of us can. He's yeah. the only person with the fortitude, right? With the iron will to endure, <laughs> just kind of going through the garbage. <laughs> We thank him for and it. And we do, we uh, do. We give, we, give, we give thanks. It is great content. My four-hour video will answer some of this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> he, he commented earlier But only on, some of the stuff. Yeah, yeah. He commented earlier on our video saying he's going to make a four-hour response to it, <laughs> <laughs> which we will watch in its entirety. <laughs> uh, yes. We'll watch every second of it. Uh, you will have full engagement from us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Connor is is great. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Definitely. Hopefully, <clears throat> hopefully, some additional. <coughs> we can uh, once the the bumps in the road. Hopefully, the bumps in the road regarding scheduling with the Cyberpunk game can be ironed out. Um, in the not too distant future, we can get. A cadence at least for a few sessions going up mm -hmm. in the normal every other week um, yeah. cycle but hopefully also at some point we can get some other uh games uh going it's just and time time is the eternal enemy right yeah it's, it's scheduling it's, in time you know scheduling uh, in time would, and and i'd love to run f like <coughs> many more uh, different games for different systems, different characters, um, but not only my own time, but your time, but any other um, additional players. You know, it's, it's yeah. just not the biggest limiting factor feasible. for me. Recently, I mean, not recently. It's been all year. Uh, all year has been work because uh, it's been just yeah. ridiculous, uh, truly ridiculous. Actually, when Nick came uh, and stayed here the the other week. He got here on Friday, and I was like, yeah, I'll be done at like 5, 5.30, 8 p.m. <laughs> I'm like, yep. okay, we're done. I can I can sign <laughs> off. You know, it's like I've been on since 9 a.m. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, uh, so it's, there's been, it's been pretty crazy. But honestly, the last couple of weeks uh, have kind of settled. So it feels like maybe nice. there's a turning point, which would be nice mm. because it was getting nice. really to be too much. And the the worst part was it was starting to interfere with YouTube, so <laughs> it's, it's, it's the important <laughs> unacceptable. Yeah, we had a we had a, a period where you know we weren't making much stuff, and that was not fun and not acceptable. Yeah, and that was just after uh, number was was going up, but number was not going up fast enough. <laughs> fast enough, yes, uh, must be rectified. <clears throat> Method actors, I'm still not sure what they are. I get a different answer from directors. Sometimes I wonder if I am method acting. I do try to find motivation for a character, though. Yeah, you're not method acting. Method acting is where you try to take on and immerse yourself in the character so much that you are, like, living their life and their experiences offset. <laughs> like, you're, yeah. you're, you're putting yourself through the daily exercises and experiences that they would go through. Some of these weirdos go so far as to, like, when they're on set... You can only refer to them as their character name, even when the cameras are off. You know, it's like it's right. uh, I don't know. Some of these guys are great. Like no one's going to say that Daniel Day Lewis is a bad actor. Uh, right. But uh, having gone through some theater training, I definitely prefer the classical method much more, which is working with goals uh, and trying to achieve them. And uh, as opposed to going completely psycho like some of these people do. Yeah. Or just as an excuse to be an asshole. Right. Yeah, I don't think any of all... Actually, now that you say that, the greatest role player might be J. Scott Garibay. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> he is living the gimmick of a deluded fool. That's true. Uh, is it just a role? Is J. Scott Garibay... He's, he's be he has become... His own caricature. Right. Um, Method acting is like Christian Bale starving himself in that one movie. The Machinist. Yes, correct. Machinist. Great movie. I've J. Scott Garibay is in character 24-7. That guy deserves an yeah. Oscar. He does. <clears throat> yeah. Absolutely. 
insane. I was looking at the uh, some of the old um, Nerdarchy videos because he used to be part of that channel um, mm -hmm. when before they really blew up. They were doing Pathfinder One content, um, and uh, so I wanted to see if there were, if there has been an e an evolution mm -hmm. in the J. Scott Garibay character um and i don't i think he's always been he's always been this way he's got um, like at the very at the he's got like 4600 videos or something on his channel yeah so like <laughs> i'm sure you could go back like really far you could just take snapshots from like various years and see like yeah. what's the journey you know like <laughs> yeah deeper into insanity <laughs> that's it you know we were like I, I think about this, like what does he do for a living? Like I think it's got to be like Postmates like, or Uber or something. I think there's no way he's an Uber driver. Um, That's true. It's got to be deli no way delivery. He's an Uber driver. Somewhere. I think yeah. he does. He has to do DoorDash. Yeah, or something, something like that. Um, so yeah, like who who else has that much time during the day? To just drive, to just around, drive and around, talk about D and D, talking about D and D, <laughs> or not talk about D and D. <laughs> really, <laughs> like yeah, most really. of the time, it's like today we're going to talk about. Uh, hi, it's Scott Garibay, <laughs> and today yeah. we're going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons and Candela Obscura. Now, Candela Obscura. Okay, <laughs> um, okay, let me back up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> haven't started. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Eight minutes later, has yeah. not started. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh rpg is dumb no <laughs> not only fans <laughs> oh <laughs> at k9 i <clears throat> when i first uh saw him i thought this is either greatest troll who has ever graced the internet or true insanity uh and unfortunately it, it's it's definitely true insanity yeah um i would love for him to his character, he would be so fucking funny. If this was if this was all a troll, it would be I, the I mean, funniest thing that's ever happened. It would be yeah. it would be the funniest thing. Uh, but uh, that would be like he's, he's Andy Kaufman believer. level trolling, yeah. like <laughs> <laughs> actual method acting. Yeah, uh, yeah, like <laughs> yeah. Damn, crazy is still crazy, and Pathfinder and Star Wars games is DD. I don't remember. I think he was running a Pathfinder game. Um, whatever it is I saw, I th I think. And it was dog shit, as you might imagine. Um, zero <laughs> roleplay whatsoever. Um, all, all the, all the char him just droning on, um, not making sense from one moment to the other, and uh, all the players sitting silently doing nothing, making references or jokes or asking questions yeah exactly what you would have you would expect he used mm. to be on nerdarchy yep that's what we were talking about yep please keep yep. up no <laughs> is the tech guy at his progressive church and then he does some door dashing i think ah uh, that also that makes make sense. sense yeah yeah he's oh, also God. the prophet of the most highest yeah. GM yeah. Johnny. He is welcome. the most progressive. Do we know GM Johnny? I don't know if we've seen this guy before. Welcome to the chat. Uh, I don't recognize, um, but welcome nevertheless. Yeah. Our apologies if we don't. Uh... How do you do, fellow method actor? It's uh... <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> right on. Happy to have you. Yeah, new guy. Happy to have you. Yes. Yeah, crazy. Uh... Well, I am. St I I I can't bear to watch. Uh, I can't even hate watch uh, his his videos. Um, or not even. It's not even hate watch. It's cringe watch. Um, I can sometimes watch it. It depends on the topic. Every once in a while. I had to. I, had, I used to have notifications for his videos, but it it was so many. <laughs> Too much. It was yeah. like four or five videos a day. Yeah. And then. I couldn't handle it because it was just it was just too much. And then 
Uh, now I check in every <laughs> once in a while, see if the title seems interesting at all. Um, usually the video is not about the title, um, <laughs> so it doesn't. It's kind of yeah. a crapshoot anyway. Um, yep. But every once in a while, you get something good. Meth actor. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I like his space elevator videos. I haven't seen those. I haven't seen those. Feeble mind save every time. Yeah. <laughs> I put him on for five seconds for the podcast show and he was yelling about how he wanted to, and I quote, decimate the OSR. Yeah, he uh Yeah. He views the OSR as like a corporation or something. Like it's Watsi versus the OSR. Yeah, it's a it's competing like, It's a competing institution yeah. or something. Like it makes literally no sense. And he's always like, right. the OSR, these guys, you know, they have they don't sell anything like Dungeons and Dragons does. It's like, yeah, they're independent game developers. Yeah, and it's not about it's not <laughs> just about so. We 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 talked about this in our podcast episode devoted to him to the uh was it the bug man cometh that he he is he is the bug man. Yeah. Uh he is the first in line of the new race for sure. Yeah. If if uh if the demons win um Oof. the world will be filled with you will, J Scott Garibay. Yeah, Garibay's. your children will all be J Scott Garibay's. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> Um, <laughs> I can't stop watching. I've unsubbed like 12, 12 times. <laughs> Frog Arca says, I unironically like his 2008 style of making videos. I do too. That's the thing. It is, it's like classic YouTube video, you know, it's a bygone yeah. era. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do pest control. Pest control. I, I used to have driving, driving videos. videos. Back in the day. I don't remember those. <laughs> yeah. Do not remember those. Hmm. Yeah, like you said, it's a, a a bygone age. Some might say it's a it's a it's a throwback to previous iteration of internet life. Yeah. You tell your girlfriend you okay tabletop games. Uh, you play tabletop games, I assume, and she thinks it's cute. Then Garibay comes over and she dumps you immediately. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! As she should. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do not. Do not watch. <laughs> that is really funny <laughs> yeah I would love to uh, part of some like masochistic part of me would like interview him like in person not even interview him just you have five minutes together Garibay like I, I have to uh, convert me to the faith. If you can convert me, I'll, you know, I'll be, I'll be a willing supplicant to St. Gary Gygax. You know, um, tell me how this makes sense. Explain it to me in like under, under a minute, what, what, what your world, what your worldview is. Like, what are you actually trying to put over? Uh, but I know that's a it's a futile effort. It's the uh, it's the only thing I can I can do when faced with uh, something that's real that's truly incomprehensible. K nine ninety nine says uh, I saw some people the other day seriously talking about if he might martyr himself for D anD D. They were being dead serious. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. If if I I I actually believe this, mm -hmm. I truly believe that. Uh, this is a religion to him. This is a oh yeah uh, an un, an unironic faith, and if it if it weren't for the fact that it's a fundamental ethos faith. of the right, it's a it's a yes, but the ethos this? of the face of the faith is uh what would you say the ethos is of the faith is weakness weakness and sloth and just doing nothing and consuming if it weren't for the fact that that ethos prevents the vitality to martyr yourself 
Yeah. Um, that <laughs> if it weren't if it weren't for that, if he was actually you know, evangelized to uh, so, something else with the same fervor he has now, he absolutely would. He absolutely would. Yeah. I legitimately believe that. He was on two Which is shows. interesting. We will see, we will see what happens as the years go by. Yeah, he will only become more crazy. Yeah. And we'll see a lot more of that, I think, around the time the new edition of D&D comes out next year. Mm. Um, yeah. Or the not new edition, whatever. The reprint. Whatever the fuck they're whatever. doing with it now. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> whatever, yeah, whatever cash grab they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> we got our campaign's wage cage. Yarbay 2023. <laughs> <laughs> he was on two shows months back. Interesting. I wonder what what shows were they? I can't. I don't know who would possibly have him. Right. My God, he won a statue of Gygax <laughs> bigger than the Statue of Liberty. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's clearly he's way more important than the Statue of Liberty. Uh, right. Yeah. When he as a historical that... figure, Gygax will be remembered much be more remembered. than the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. When he said. Um, Again, straight face that um, I forget how he how he put it, but um, books are an obsolete medium. Like, <laughs> yeah, <books> are, <laughs> like, there's no value in books anymore now that we have PDFs yeah. of of uh, of role playing games of DD. Yeah, books are, books are an inferior. He also you know, he, means of conveying information. He literally said that uh, the most important literary figures now are dungeon masters, and that. William Shakespeare. Yeah, Shakespeare, Shakespeare is in the has garbage. Has nothing now. on yeah. your average DM that lives three doors down from you. Yeah, like that is holy fucking shit. crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he was on Max's know, show I mean, and Bloodworth's too. Really? Damn, he was, Max could tolerate him. That's crazy. Bloodworth, I I could, I could see. Yeah, I, I, I really. Uh, it's very hard for me to get through. Which one is Dion Bloodworth videos. again? <clears throat> He's the older, heavier guy. He sits back in a chair. Oh, yeah, and he um, does, like, game reviews and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, very um, hard, hard to be engaged. Damn. That's crazy. I yeah, have that's to track, wild. track down Max uh, talking talking to him. That'd be pretty interesting. I can't I can't believe Max didn't just have like and just chimp out and get <laughs> red in the red in the face. And, um, I'm kind of disappointed that he didn't. If he didn't. Uh, <laughs> but that that is the natural reaction that you should yeah. have. But <clears throat> damn, I'm I think I'll. That. I think if I if I watch some more of Max's videos, I might be able to do an impression of him too. That'd be pretty good. Uh, he has a, a very he has the he has, a, he has a yeah accent. but he he has like a specific like cadence and like uh he sounds exactly like Rakita Law I've not watched enough Rakita Law I the only the only reason I, I watch I he was the guy I was watching during uh like the, 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 written, <laughs> the house. written house trial. yeah um I was I just turned on I think the trial itself like I didn't want like a play-by-play -play or anything yeah. I was just uh man I was like glued to that though i watched the whole thing i watched the whole finish. fucking crazy. thing yeah yeah got no work done yeah <laughs> <laughs> there was more important things <laughs> more important things i was participating in in, <laughs> in the uh, about me who knows what would have happened yeah written, the, ex exactly <laughs> written, written house take my high energy <laughs> you know like... <laughs> 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 Damn. I really want <clears throat> I want to talk to uh Max more. I, I I like um Which Max are we talking about now? Mr. Max or well, both. Both. Yeah. But uh Max uh Legion of Myth. Yeah. Um I want to talk to both of them. Um but um I uh, there's some things I I dis I disagree with or I'm not entirely sure uh, about, but I like I like the spite that he has for uh, for people who don't yeah. uh, who don't uh, 
role play um, or who game wrong. Um, e even if even if you disagree about what um, our uh, perspective is on gaming, if you unapologetically believe there is a right and a wrong way of gaming, you at least get some points from me. Um, yeah. That is. Uh, yeah. Biggest geekest destroyed J. Scott Garibay in an interview on Legion oh, Myth. Not surprising. <laughs> not so, I mean, it's not yeah. hard. Yeah. I wonder I wonder if Garibay could comprehend it. Probably no. not. I can't imagine that's even possible. But um, I will track that Every down. once in a while, he has like a sane take, uh, which is yeah. when I turn the video off because I don't care about that. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's, it's not like, why I'm watching you. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like incidental. Yeah. And accidental. Like he had very much that... uh like he was talking about McDonald's and how yeah, he yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, like how he hates how everyone shits on McDonald's. And he's like, Yeah, it's not the healthiest food in the world. But you know what? Like, if you're broke and you and your family want to go and sit down and have a meal together, you can go to McDonald's and you can get some food. And it tastes good. And you can sit there and like have a nice time. He's like, right. what's wrong with that? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> like I agree. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh. Jeffrey Tucker Garibay. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I maintain that McDonald's breakfast does not count as regular McDonald's. Yeah, I kind of agree. But I mean, like, yeah. I don't know. I'm fine that. with McDonald's. Like it's bad for you. I know. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> it is. Right. It is slop. It is bad. But yeah, make uh, no as mistake, far as fast food but... goes, it tastes much better than it used to, and it's much better than like Burger that King or like you know any of this other shit. Burger King sucks. It's so Although bad. I haven't been in a Burger King in like ten years. You're not. That is the correct choice. <laughs> you, <laughs> you have not made a mistake there. I'm proud of him when he has his rare moments of clarity. Doesn't even count for the for the yeah. breakfast, I believe. Meta aesthetic TTRPG realism. <laughs> McGriddle is king. McGriddle is king. I can eat their lunch dinner menu once every three months, but I can do their breakfast weekly. What McDonald's breakfast is the best part? Yeah, that's what that's what he, I think he's saying. Yep. Is that like yeah, yeah, yeah. that doesn't count as McDonald's? <laughs> right. Bottle cap gets it. Yeah. Yep. Damn, I haven't seen this show in a while. Yeah. Oh yeah. Every Thursday. What did Justin say the other day that was really funny? He it was something about D and D. Uh, I think he commented on the Lion and Dragon. It was a video. Yeah, it was a comment okay. on the Lion and Dragon video that was like, "The best edition of D and D is the one that's in the garbage." <laughs> 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 or no, it's, it's the one that's in the fireplace. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> nice yeah i laughed very very hard at that it's <laughs> 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 hilarious <laughs> don't eat crap food okay. yeah i mean i agree you shouldn't but yeah. sometimes i do you know i just drank <laughs> a, a fucking can of corn syrup so <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I agree with you in theory. <laughs> yeah. Could do as I say, not as I do. Yeah. <laughs> I just can't eat at McDonald's anymore. Got to put points yeah. in Constitution. Yeah. <laughs> not a dump stat. Yeah. I really like I mean, the parody songs. What would Jeffrey Tucker do? Wow. <laughs> that is a deep cut. <laughs> Going back to Marakiu. <laughs> Jeffrey Tucker made an appearance in our Lion and Dragon review, by the way, as well. So for really? all of you Lulberts out there, yeah, he's uh he's oh, hiding right, in there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the actual memes for those who get it. Yeah. Those who know. Yeah. Yeah. Very, uh, I've been going a little bit, uh, on my end with, um, some stuff to try and, uh, 
pick up pick up the video pace over here. I have a couple couple ideas. I started uh, jotting down some some thoughts um, on some video topics. So we'll see. Yeah, I've got the next yeah. one that I want to make uh, planned out. It's basically just a matter of writing the script and then making the video. <laughs> but it's been right. Yeah, it's just been tough with work, and then I've got uh, some travel and stuff coming up, so mm, it'd be better right, to start right, it sooner right. than later. Uh, yes. I've actually got several videos planned. Um, oh, yes. A lot, but, of, lot of things <clears throat> that were discussed and talked about. Yeah. Very excited to get those off the ground. Yeah. And I think the, sure. the next couple of videos are probably going to be shorter than the, the Lion and Dragon one and less detailed because mm. I have less to say about them. Yeah. Um, uh, but they will probably be in the same style. I think the next one is going to be a lot, is going to be very funny. Like there's like jokes yeah. in the Lion and Dragon one. And there's definitely some gaslighting and trolling going on in there, but uh, <laughs> the next one I think will be explicitly funny in a lot of ways. Uh, right, 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 right. Yeah, and I think that, yeah, you'll see what it is. Uh, you know, a couple of weeks it'll it'll be out. Um, mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, and Excellent. then the number will go up, which is the important thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Must must have that. <laughs> what type of stuff is Nick wanting to make? In terms of <clears throat> um uh like video content. Um I I really want to try and in an in an engaging way uh put over some of the some of the things we haven't talked about on the podcast, but these these pillars of gaming, like alignment. Alignment is something I actually want to make a video on, yeah, and put it put it over in an engaging way that pops and um, explains what alignment is and why it actually matters. Why does morality uh, matter? And I think you can do that really well. There's a lot of different types of morality in, in TV shows and in uh, movies that could be drawn from from uh, for uh, video content the way you did it in the Lion and Dragon video. Mm -hmm. um, very evocative, dramatic, humorous at times moments, you know, uh, uh, that put over very quickly for that show very quickly um what it is that i'm talking about i you know ideally right so that's mainly what i've been thinking about is how to put over that morality and alignment um topic into a video um but we'll see i'm you know that's sometimes i get overly cerebral about things so you know I, ha too. I have to keep it flowing but yeah you know. The important thing, basically, that I discovered is just write it out, then find out yeah. that you hate what you wrote, try and <laughs> just do it off the cuff, hate that, and then merge the <laughs> two into the final script. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, that is the process. Uh, but also, yeah. um, I think that's a really good idea. And that is something that I think we we talked about was just like the, the podcast episodes are the kind of deeper dives the full conversation right and a lot of times we're still sort of figuring out our thoughts on things during that conversation um yes and now that we have yes. figured out our thoughts explicitly on some of these things most of those topics can be videos now as videos. well so we can basically retread the same content but doing it in a much tighter more like concise way um that you know people will watch <laughs> right and these are things that that like I don't know, like matter or they're th they're they they are mm -hmm. obviously they matter from our perspective but um you know the question of alignment is one that gets asked all the all the time yeah in like gamer youtube rpg youtube um what is it does it matter how do you play it um you know so it's not an obscure topic it's something that definitely would get traction yeah um i'm sure of it Especially if, if done um, in a in a in a if done in an engaging, engaging well way, an attention grabbing, an attention sustaining yes, way. Yes, yes, yeah. 
Here's a video topic. When you've got a good blaze going over those D&D &D books, should you make s'mores or hot dogs? Big, deep questions. Big, deep questions. Yes, we already we did make an alignment video. We, we had a podcast episode on it, but this the idea would be, like Matt just said, <clears throat> distill that hour-long conversation into a seven, eight, nine-minute video that really um, has just the pure argument and yeah. puts over um, in, a, in like a YouTube video format right? Um, in engaging, not bite size, but, you know, video size yeah. um, uh, presentation of what the perspective is. Um, I was very happy with, with our, our conversation on that. I was too. Well, the smoke will make you like Bud Light. <laughs> yeah. After last night's diversity and dragons show with Pundit, some dude on YouTube thinks they are Freemasons and diabolical. That mm. might be Mr. Max. <laughs> Mr. Max. <laughs> to be honest, he's, yeah. I think he's called Pundit a, a Freemason a couple of times. Well, he, he um, Pundit does wear a Freemason ring. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise see, me. Uh, his, I mean, he's into yeah. that esoteric yeah. stuff. Which um, now I, I see... Um, I just his don't name, care. talking about games, um, has, has made a, a slew of videos, like a cult, a cultist reacts to Japanese rituals for like tabletop immersion, which I don't know, it seems seems cringe. Yeah, but, that doesn't uh, seem like something I'd it. want to watch. Gender revealing uh, smoke. Yeah. <clears throat> so he's right on one thing. Crap, maybe it is a conspiracy of cultists. I'm simply a man. I like the simple questions. Feed him more false information. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very... Um, uh, we will be t uh, uh, talking about people on on shows. Um, I think at 9 p.m. Eastern tomorrow, we're going to be on... Let Harry me the pedantics. check. I, I saw I saw I he it's... put a notification, a, remind, a video reminder out, and at least for me it said 9 p.m. Right. So it's it's, I think that's correct because I I said 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, which is where I am. Right. Yeah. So yeah. yeah so yeah. 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 Eight Central. yeah. So tomorrow we'll be uh, like you just said on Aaron the Pedantics live stream at 8 CST. Um, yeah. Which should be pretty fun. And then. Um, yeah, and I think he he he. He weighed in on our. Yeah, he made a response two, video two to our backstory last week's last week's podcast yeah, backstory video. Yeah, yeah, and my uh, my my spurg out screed again, <laughs> <laughs> my castigation. Um, <laughs> uh, and then looking forward to talking to him. Yeah, me too. And then next Thursday, uh, and we are still confirming this, but. Uh, tentatively, uh, RPG mm. Pundit is going to come on our Thursday live stream. Uh, yeah, which is also going to be... Which is going to be fucking very, cool. Very interesting. Yeah. Very cool. That will be an interesting stream. So Yeah, and I think he also initially reached out because of that backstory video. Yes. Um, yeah, he wanted to discuss our views on story and backstory, and I'm sure that we'll talk about a lot of other topics as well. As well. Yeah, um, no doubt. Yeah, so that'll definitely be an interesting one, and you should all, uh, you should all come I'll by. I'll tune in for that. But again, that's tentative. We'll we'll have we we'll still have to check yeah. back in and confirm with him. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it'll probably happen. Um, so that'll be pretty cool. I'm really yeah, yeah I'm really looking forward to talking to him. Yeah, there's there's some really cool people in this, um, this circle of like RPG YouTube. Yeah. Um, that um have really great ideas i like the cut of their jib um definitely people again it's like, it's like we said on yesterday's video people who are uh opposed to role playing opposed to an immersive style who just want um you know horse shit uh, in their written material <clears throat> these videos aren't for them um, we're not trying to convince them. They can't be convinced. They should be mocked, and they will be mocked. Um, but um, for the people who who actually are 
not insane uh, and who have a sense of quality, a sense of aesthetic, a sense of effort and uh, legitimate interest in the in the hobby really want to uh, have no problems talking uh, talking to them. You know, I think um, I think uh, Mr. Max made a um, Twitter comment today. I saw sort of lamenting the lack of a dialectic in the RPG space, and I understand where he's coming from. Um, I do not share that. I understand the though. instinct. Yeah. Um, there is no dialectic. Um, the, the the marketplace of ideas is a lie. Um, the people who are not convinced can't be convinced. Um, and uh, I, I think that, at least from my perspective, that's 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 the stance I'm 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 taking. Call out enemies where they are because they are enemies, not only against the hobby but more broadly speaking. Um, if you call out your enemies, you will know who your friends are. And friends, there is no dialectic. You know, we're not diametrically opposed trying to hash out something in an effort to reach the truth, which um, that's a, that's that doesn't happen. Um, but I'm always interested in talking to talking to people, um, you know, who 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 have the right the right attitude, even if we don't uh, agree on everything. Like Pundit, like, um, at least from what I've seen of Aaron's, Aaron's videos, um, I know he took a hiatus uh, for a while. I, I don't agree with everything, uh, but I'm, you know, he, he is not, he's not an enemy. Uh, I have no problem talking to him. Yeah, I agree. Anyhow, I, uh, I'm feeling like it's time to wrap things up. Uh, okay. I got to walk this dog again now that it's a little bit cooler. But uh, this has been a really fun stream. Um, I'm glad all you guys chose to yeah. come hang out with us. And I definitely hope that you continue to do so. Yes, very much so. And that it's you continue to tuned in. continue to make our click rate go up. Yeah. You know, because it's all we're <laughs> doing is clickbait. Uh, according to some yeah, people, literally no other reason for this. Yeah, there couldn't possibly be any other reason. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you very much for stopping it's, by. Uh, um, hey, real quick, hope for the best. Yeah, says we are, have spot color art in your core book, or coated paper. I don't know what what the distinction is. Would you rather have? Uh, I think it's like, do you want color art? If the option is it's black and white but has coated paper or color but non-coated paper, I'd go with black and white with coated paper, personally. I think... I think hope for the best is think, true. I think I agree. I'm, I I would need to see what exactly uh, you're, you're talking you, about. But, I th uh, okay, so this is, this is Drew, and he's talking about Epic of Dreams. He's putting in the order for the book oh, tomorrow. Okay. okay, so here's... Uh, Here's what I'm going to oh, I still, tell you. Uh, if, I still if you're like choosing some sort of option for me also, or whatever, I trust you, man. Go with what you think is the yeah, better same. option. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 your your game. Uh, whatever whatever uh, conveys the vision into right. my eyes, the better. Yeah. That is is preferable. Cool. Good stuff. Right. All right, guys. I'm going right, to end guys. the stream now. So have a good night. Yep. Take it easy, everybody. And remember. No apologies. Apologies. No, no compromises. compromises. Yeah. <laughs>